Welcome, friends, to our devotional study today in the book of First Thessalonians. We are in chapter 5. We've been looking at the end of this chapter. There are some exhortations to godly living. And uh, we saw in verses 12 and 13, we are to honor those in places of spiritual responsibility. And then in verses 14 and 15, there's an exhortation for harmony there. And then as we come into verses 16 through 22, there are various exhortations there that we want to begin looking at today. And uh, so let's read those verses, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, down through verse 22. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. So as we come into these verses, there are various exhortations that you and I should follow and need to follow as a people of God. And the reason why we need to follow these is because very simply, these are commands of God. These are things that God has instructed us to do. And if it's our desire to honor and please him, and then we need to have these things as a part of our life. First of all, we see in verse 16 that he says, rejoice evermore. It talks about the fact that you and I are to always be uh, having a rejoicing spirit. That, that is something that is continually in our life. And uh, we're not going to take a great amount of time to look at this, but there's a vast difference between rejoicing or joy and happiness. Happiness is very fickle uh, and is very much dependent on our happenings many times. But the joy of the Lord goes so much deeper than that. And uh, joy goes beyond what's happening and helps us understand that God is in control, that we can always rejoice in him, that we have an abundance of reasons to rejoice even when things are not going well for us. Paul, in Philippians chapter 4, was sitting in a Roman prison cell, and uh, those certainly were not like the prison cells that we have today, but yet in the mix of that prison cell, Paul writes in Philippians 4 and verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And uh, friends, we you and I, need to have that attitude of rejoicing. And you know, one of, the, one of the things that I've learned in my life is this. If I'm at a point where I really don't feel like rejoicing at that exact moment, um, if I simply uh, begin to think about the, re the reasons that I have for rejoicing and rejoice in those reasons, um, even when things are bad, uh, it doesn't take me all that long to realize that whether I feel like it or not, I have an abundance of reasons to rejoice in the Lord, to praise the Lord, to give thanks for who he is. And before very long, because I've obeyed that command, rejoice evermore, then I get to the place that, I'm, that my spirit wants to rejoice uh, on like it did before. You know, Satan will seek to discourage us and to try to make us think that we do not have a reason to rejoice. But friends, that absolutely is not true. We have an abundance of reasons to rejoice and to praise the Lord. And we should be doing so. And then it says in verse 17, pray without ceasing. And that carries with it the idea of always being in the attitude of prayer. That whenever we have something good happen, a prayer that is answered, that the first thing we think about is I need to pray. I need to thank my Heavenly Father for this. Whenever we face something, the first thing that comes to our mind is not I need to call somebody for help. But the first thing that comes to our mind is I need to call on my Heavenly Father and uh, give this to him and turn this over to him. And uh, when we come to the place that God gives us opportunities to witness, that the, one of the first things that comes to our mind as we begin witnesses, witnessing is just saying that quick prayer in our hearts. God, please help me. Give me the wisdom that I need. This idea of praying without ceasing. First Corinthians chapter 11 says this. Beginning to read at verse 1. It says, Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. So there we see the importance of, of the ordinances, uh, baptism and the Lord's table, that we need to do them as they are recorded in the word of God. We do not have the authority to deviate on those, to change things about them. We need to do them as they've been given to us. Then in verse 3, it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. 
Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covereth, dishonor his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all that, all one as if she were shaven. But if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. For it is a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven. Let her be covered. Now we're not going to get into this whole cultural thing of the head covering here to teach a concept of authority and submission. We can see what the Bible teaches about authority and submission. And this was a cultural head covering um, that talked about that authority and that submission. But what I want you to see here is that the Bible talks about the importance of praying in our life and that prayer needs to be a regular habitual thing that we do. In Acts chapter 1, it says this in uh, verses 13 and 14. It says, and when they were coming in, they went up, in, up into the upper room where bo abode both uh, Peter and James and John and Philip and, and uh, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon and Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. So there we see that they all can they all continued in one accord that carries out the idea of a like-mindedness in their praying they were not praying for what they wanted they were praying for what god wanted they were praying that the will of god would be done in their lives in their midst in the church in jerusalem acts chapter 4 verse 23 says and being let go they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which may, has made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. So we see there that as they were facing these difficulties, that they poured out their hearts in praise to God. Now coming back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, notice verse 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says this, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Notice the Bible tells us it is God's will for us that we rejoice evermore. It is God's will that we pray without ceasing. It is God's will that we give thanks in everything. And, uh, you know, many times when people think about the will of God, they think about the big stuff. You know, what is God's will as far as my job is concerned or, or uh, where I'm going to live or who I'm going to marry? Friends, if we're faithful in doing the will of God in the small things, he will be faithful in guiding us in those big things as well in regard to what his will is. And the Bible here reminds us of the importance of being a people that are a thankful people. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now notice Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. Ephesians 5, 19 says giving or speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always verse 20 for all things unto god and the father in the name of our lord jesus christ so it reminds us once again in that verse of the importance of being a thankful people and uh, it's sad but we are living in a generation where uh, by and large people are not thankful people or at least people do not express their gratitude and it's important friends that we express the gratitude that we have um when people do things for us when we're thankful for somebody when we're thankful for something that they've done make sure that we tell them colossians 3 verse 16 says this let the word of christ dwelling you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and whatsoever you do do it heartily as to the lord and or whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That's Colossians 3, verses 16 and 17. So here are three basic instructions, and we'll look at four more tomorrow, but three basic instructions on what we should do uh, in order to live lives that honor and please God. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Tomorrow we'll pick up our study in verse 19. Have a great day.